Good evening, Fernwood. My name's Neil, and we are here to spend some time watching Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, the soap opera from the 1970s. We are heading into the April 23rd, 1976 episode, so let's do a recap, maybe a little bit of conversing about what I saw yesterday, what hopefully you saw recently. Charlie and Loretta are back home. They do a little bit of discussion of Loretta's gaffe, and I think I'll talk a little bit more about this after I do the recap, but basically Loretta expresses that she doesn't hate the Jewish people, uh, even though the thing that she said is widely construed as anti-Semitic. Anyway, after that discussion, I will, uh, after I do the recap, we'll talk more about that. But the thing that happens right immediately after that is that Charlie finds the check that Clyde left for them that Muriel had put up for them, but doesn't find the letter that Muriel hid. And Muriel misleads them to think that Loretta still has a career ahead of her. Unlike what Clyde said, Muriel convinces them that they've got some contracts ahead and albums and such, so they're very excited. They go over to visit Mary and Tom. Mary is fearful of seeing Loretta after seeing her career crash and burn like it did just a few days earlier. Of course, uh, Charlie and Loretta are, are very excited to share the news that they've been misled to understand. Then we see a scene that was missing from the series, and it appears in flashback with Mary and Dennis Foley outlining the plan that Mary would date Dennis once. And by date, it's implied that they mean sex. The words are not used, but there's a lot of gesturing that means what they're talking about is probably something that couldn't be talked about on television out loud. So we see that scene and it really comes off to me as completely coercive. And even if Mary is willingly, and I use that word with quotes around it, going into the situation, it really does feel like Dennis has manipulated every single person around him to get this result. So he's willing to have one night of sleeping with Mary, again, not, uh, not verbalized, but implied. And that seems to be good enough for him. Well, that's just ugly, ugly, ugly. Speaking of ugly, we then get to the scene where Charlie finally speaks to the actor playing Timmy. Of course, it's very clear that Timmy is not Muriel and Charlie's son because he's a young black boy. And it's already been very much explained that this is not a real son to Charlie and Muriel. Anyway, Charlie is insistent that Timmy come down to meet them in four days' time. We'll see what happens there. So that's my recap. I really do want to address this because I didn't talk about it yesterday and I had intended to. What does Loretta need to do as far as, you know, we talk a lot about cancel culture in the modern day. And I, I, again, I don't agree I mean, it exists as a meme, right? Cancel culture exists as an idea to talk about things, but uh, memes are nasty little, little beasts. So maybe let's say Loretta had one gaffe as opposed to other actors who have repeated, repeated bits of uh, behavior that they continue to repeat. I think a question would be how could and it doesn't, the show doesn't make it seem like it's possible, but how could Loretta make amends for her gaffe? Make amends for the statement that she made that really affected what seems to be a large amount of the populace? I think I googled the stages of apology, and these are more for the kinds of things that you would apologize for in a personal sense to one single person you know there's stuff like making a statement of 
taking the blame on, right? So knowing that you have done something wrong. And I think Loretta doesn't realize that at this stage. She doesn't realize, even if she didn't mean to be hurtful, the things she said were hurtful. So there's intent and impact, right? Uh, we're talking a lot about that in one of my discussion threads, but she didn't mean to hurt anybody. Of course, she did hurt people. So she's got to make some amends for that. There's also the question of whether she has learned anything from it, whether she has learned that the thing that she said is painful and bad to others, uh, and whether she's willing to, to work to be better in the future. And I don't think that she sees that, of course, I don't think that the conversation about how to apologize was really out in the world in the 1970s. And I, maybe it's stuff that we have developed. I don't really know when these stages of apology came out. I feel like I saw them within the last five years or so. Uh, and that doesn't mean that they only existed then. That's just when I remember seeing them. But Loretta hasn't really done much of the apologizing. I think just simple, simply saying that you're sorry is not all of the apologizing that one needs to do when someone hurts a person, not to mention when someone hurts a major portion of the community. So that's my brief overlook, you know, my, my Google fed understanding how to apologize. If you've got better ideas, go ahead and share them below because I I feel like I'm always in the need of learning how to be a better human being. So anyway, that is my chatter before we start the April 23rd episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Let Us Begin. She had to take care of something. Headed next door to her mom's. He's just getting home. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get you. Sure, I'm glad you're here because I've just busted to talk to somebody yeah. about Timmy. Yeah, I wonder what she had to take care of. Well, you know, Mary Tom, she's probably just helping somebody. Listen, listen. I talked to my son Timmy tonight on the telephone. Yeah, that's great. Listen, you want a beer? You know, what he, you know what he called me? Oh, Timmy. My son. What? What are you calling? Dad. Yeah. I've never been called that before. I mean, I've been called a lot of things, some good and some bad, but that's the first time in my life I ever heard myself called dead. <laughs> well, what would you expect him to call you, Charlie? I mean, after all, you're his father, aren't you? Yeah, you know, I, I, until I talked to the kid, I actually heard his voice just about an hour ago. I, I never really believed it. Listen, uh, the system's a little leftover tuna casserole. Here, you want some? No, it says I should heat it up for, here for dinner. Is it chunky tuna? No, I didn't chunk it, just plain. You want some? Huh? No, I, I already had dinner, Tom. I had dinner. Listen, Tom, do you have any idea what it's like to, to, to hear your own kid's voice that you didn't even know existed? You're a 14-year-old boy. I didn't even know it was in this world until a week ago. Huh? No, I don't. I don't know. Listen, I'm not hungry. Hey, what, what day is today? It's Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, listen, it's an experience. Yeah. It is an experience, man. Yeah, there's something about Thursday and Mary. It's an experience that I'm never going to forget if I live to be as old as Grandpa Mark. Now, I'm, t I'm telling you, that kid, that kid, he's a chip off the block. He, he, he sounds just like me. I mean, you know, he's he's tall. He's tall. He's like five foot seven. And yeah. you know when he grows up, he's got to be over six feet. Oh, well, you're pretty tall, child. Yeah, yeah. Tall jeans, just like me. Yeah. I'll tell you another way he's like me is he likes sports. You know what his favorite sport is? Bowling? Football. Now, that's just like me. Now, who runs the football pool down at the plant every fall? Well, you do, child. You're darn right I do. And next season... I am going to those games with Tim, Timmy Haggers in person. Yeah? They're going to visit you? 
Yeah, he's coming in four days. In four days, that kid is getting on a plane. He's going to fly from Saskatoon, Alaska, right down here to Fernwood, and I'm going to lay my own eyes on my own son. Now, what do you think of that, huh? I think that's great. I'll tell you, it's great. Gee, yeah. Yeah, if Loretta and I have, our, have anything to say about it, he's going to spend the rest of the time right here in Fernwood living with us. What does Muriel have to say about it? Yeah, well, that's the flying home. Right? But we'll work something out. I mean, things things work out for the best. Didn't, don't you think so? I mean, don't things always work out for the best? Uh, what is the matter with you? Nothing. What are you worried about? I don't worry about nothing. You worried about Mary? What makes you think I'm worried about Mary? You were worried about her before Loretta and me went to Hollywood. I'm not worried about Mary, Charlie. I'm not worried about her. Good, good. Don't worry about Mary. Okay, I won't. Now, you have no cause to worry about Mary. Okay. On the other hand, I'm worried about you. Me? Yeah. I mean, you... You said you got them bruises falling off the ladder, Tom. Now, I ain't the rumor that's going around the plane. Well, you want to know the truth? Huh? Yeah. I got beat up because I know too much. And you know what I know? I know that the financial secretary of the union is embezzling union local due funds and putting them in his brother-in-law's phony business. That's what he's doing. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure, for God's sake. You know what I'm going to do? I'm damn sure. You know what I'm going to do, Charlie? I'm going to bring that son of a bitch up on charges right in front of the union. That's what I'm going to do. And I got a right to do that because I got elected for that. Right, Tommy? Tom, take it easy. This is not permanent press. Now, take it easy. So, I'm sorry I'll have Mary pass that for me. It's just a, I'm worried about her. Charlie, I don't know where the hell she is. Well, hello. Hello. I'm really glad you came by. Come on in. Can we just stand here for a little while? Come on in. Oh, this is really such a nice place, Thomas. No, it really is. It's just in such fine taste. Did the people before you leave this stuff? No. No, it's all mine. You liked it the last time. Oh, did I? Did I mention it before? Did I mention about the colors and the... Coordinated. Did I mention that? Oh. Take your coat. Oh, well, I, I'm not sure that I'm staying. Of course you're staying. <sighs> I was trying to get my bag in. Coat and sleeves. <laughs> this is the people say. Mary. I can't tell you how much I've been thinking about, about this moment. I've been thinking about it too, but um, in a different way. I think it's the same way. I mean, you think that you've been thinking about this moment in the same way that I've been thinking about this moment? Yes. I don't think so. I'll uh, put your coat away. Well, <sighs> it's Thursday, and you're here. Do you have any cards? I don't have any cards. Oh, well, how about backgammon? Would you have to have a backgammon set? I mean, I saw a nun on a talk show, and she said that it's going to be bigger than bingo. I don't have a backgammon set. Oh. Hmm. It's funny. I just thought that you would have a backgammon set. I don't know why I thought you would, but I just assumed, you know, that Dennis Foley would have a backgammon set. In fact, I said to myself on the way over here, I said to myself, Mary, that's what I call myself when I talk to myself, Mary. I said, uh, Mary, Dennis Irving Foley will have a backhand set, which is why I was just so disappointed when you mentioned that you didn't have a backhand set because I was counting on it. Mary, you've been to my apartment three times. Have I? Three times? Three times, and nothing's happened. I told you that I had to set the date for the wedding if you didn't show up today. You're here. Well, this is 
is it. <laughs> this is the 11th hour. <laughs> Funny. You know, I remember there was a television show Mary. called um, Mary. Mary. Quite contrary. How does your plant grow like that? That is fantastic. The way that does that. I mean, what a little beauty. Mary, I want you to do something for me. I want you to raise your right hand. What for? Just do it, okay? All right, but <laughs> I think silly. Now, repeat after me. I, Mary Hart. <laughs> See, that's funny. I, Mary Hart. I swear to God. I swear to God, Dennis, this is silly. <laughs> that I wasn't the least bit aroused by that kiss. Say it, Mary. Dennis, my hand was falling asleep. That's her. Doesn't matter. I know how you felt. Why are you so sure? Because I tell things like they are. And we have something special. You know that. And I know that. And that's the only truth that matters. You know, I never noticed that you had two lips before. the fish are biting, Mrs. Muncy. Yeah, well, thank you. Right, I, I would be, I would be much obliged if you would have Clyde call us first thing as soon as he gets here. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, no wonder we couldn't get through to Clyde. Him and his brother are off on a fishing trip in the Adirondacks somewhere. Mmm. Mm. That is good. Oh, aren't these just luscious? I mean, it's almost like they's wicked, isn't it? Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Well, honey, um, when do you think I'm going to get the new recording contract? End of the week, honey. You see my glasses? Yeah, they're around right here somewhere. Um, darn, I can't believe you're able to go off and lose something so important as that. Well, if she's going to lose something, I'm awful glad she lost the, the letter with the contracts in it, and not the letter with the, with the ch check in it. Yes, me, she shouldn't have lost neither. Here, she. Well... But don't worry about it, because I called Detroit, and then Clyde, Clyde's brother's secretary is going to put in a duplicate letter and a duplicate uh, con of the contracts and send it right off to us right away, so don't worry about it. Well, it's just that, you know, with all this stuff falling through and everything, I mean, like the Blue Peacock Casino in Vegas and the bookings and even the Capri Lounge, well, I'm just kind of the slightest, teensiest little bit nervous, you know, that uh, I may never live down that little goof I made on Dinah's show. Now, honey, don't talk like that. All that bad news is behind us. Yeah, okay, maybe you're right. I think I'll just treat it like a bad nightmare. And this is the next morning, and I'm all woke up, and it's all disappeared. Now you're talking. Except it's nighttime, and I'm getting pretty sleepy. You're not too sleepy, are you? Not too sleepy. Well, now, you know better than that, Chug. I think I will just go and brush my teeth. Um, Charlie, you don't have to brush your teeth. I love to taste of strawberries. Then that is what you are going to get. Yeah. Mm. 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 
taste them? Yeah. I swear to Pete, Charlie, it's just always the darkest hour before dawn, isn't it? You know, like 24 hours ago, I would have just, I, I thought we was ready to throw in the towel. At least ways, you know, me. But now, everything's coming up roses. Yeah. You got my career back, and you got yourself a son. We got ourselves a son. Do you think he's going to like me? Honey, still, don't do that. Now, you know he's going to love you just like everybody else in this whole world loves you. And, and, you, you can know, hardly wait to see him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got big plans for him. He's gonna go to college. I want him to go to college. I want him to go to graduate school. Yeah. I want him to amount to something. Not like his old man. Oh, Charlie Hagers, now don't you go putting down his old man. Well, honey, let's face it. I mean, if if I didn't have your career to manage, what would I be? nothing. But if the two of us get right behind Timmy, there's no telling what he could be. I mean, he could be a lawyer or a doctor, an accountant, a dentist. They make good money. Dentist? Yeah. Especially the kind that straighten out kids' teeth. They own condominiums and yachts and all like that. Yeah, but I don't know how much fun that would be, Charlie, just standing up on your feet all day, peering down into people's mouths, you know, straightening teeth and stuff. They can take pride in their work, honey. They got to have skillful hands like a like a surgeon or like a sculptor. I mean, that is important work. That is challenging. Well, maybe, but it ain't as important and challenging as President of the United States of America. Shoot, why not? President Timmy Hagers. Timothy. He's going to be president. They can't call him Timmy. Well, shoot, Charlie. They called Kennedy Jack, didn't they? Yeah. And Eisenhower Ike. Yeah. And uh, Nixon Dickey. Maybe he shouldn't be president. <laughs> well, now, Charlie, if he wants to be president, you let him. You're right. You're right. I'll, if my son wants to be president of the United States, I will not stand in his way. I will still be proud of Are you going to tell me that you still don't feel anything? Oh, well, of course I felt something. I mean, you know, I'm a person. You know, I'm like a living, breathing person. And you're a person. I mean, you're a very person. And, you know, I, I, I am here and I'm in your apartment. And, you know, in just a matter of minutes, we're going to be... Tell you know, the truth. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, I did feel something. You see, like, for example, like, if I stub my toe, I feel something. If I get a splinter or something, I feel something. So if someone puts their arms around me and kisses me and holds me, I feel something. I want you to admit that you were aroused. Dennis, why do we have to talk about it? We don't have to talk about this. Let's just do it. I mean, I came over here to save my sister from a loveless marriage. It's taken me all day to work up the courage to come over here. Here I am. I'm in your apartment, and I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. No matter how bad it is, no matter how much I hate it, no matter how repulsive I find it, no matter how much grief, pain, and anguish it causes me. So that's the way you feel? Dennis, what are you doing? We had a deal. You said one time, and the wedding is off. Deal's off. What do you mean the deal's off? You can't do that. You promised. I don't want you this way, Mary. What way? Why do I look ahead? It's just water retention. I want you to come to me because you recognize what's happening between us, not because you're being forced. You mean you're not gonna... I mean, we're not... 
No. You mean you want me to go home? Yes. And you, you, you don't expect anything from me? I expect everything from you. But when you're ready to give it. Oh, Dennis. That is so sweet. Of course, if you're ready now. Ready for what? If you're ready to give yourself to me. For yourself. Wait a minute, you're confusing me. I don't think so. No, yes. I think you're confusing me a lot. I mean, I'm supposed to come here to save my sister Kathy. Now you're shifting things around here. Am I? Yes. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't stare at me like that. That really frightens me. Am I frightening you or are you just filled with feelings? I'll get your coat. I'm just worried about this dress. Hope the cleaners can get this out. I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Dennis, what about Kathy? Don't worry about Kathy. I'll do the right thing. Dennis, what do you mean you're going to do the right thing? Look, we can do it right now. We can stand right here. It'll take us a second. I can even leave my coat on. I'm going to wait for you one more time. You'll come back on your own free will. I know, next Thursday. Next Thursday? And you'll be back. You'll be back. And not just for Kathy. Not just for Kathy? No. For the want of me. don't remember the order of the scene so i'm going to go back to what i remember tom and charlie talking together about a lot of things actually mainly kind of recapping us on how charlie feels about loretta's career and that they're very excited and that there's timmy and you know none of that is actually true but he's excited about it and then it switches over to the union and gets heated between Tom and Charlie. So Tom literally grabs Charlie by the scruff, or not the scruff of his neck, but the shirt. I don't know what you call that when you grab someone's shirt front. He grabs Charlie's shirt front. And so Tom is heated about something. He has something that means something to him. Of course, taking it out on Charlie isn't the right place to do it, but he definitely has some emotion there. Then there's, well, it's Thursday, apparently. And by Thursday, I mean the Thursday in the show when Mary is supposed to meet Dennis. And to me, there's very, very little good about this situation. I could see when Dennis went in to kiss Mary that Mary went forward to kiss him. And I don't know that that speaks to well some of me says that mary does have some attraction to dennis but the important thing is that mary has a, a wall that are not a wall like she has set boundaries for her participation in this situation maybe you know those are the boundaries that she's setting and it seems to me in a lot of ways that Dennis really just wants to break those boundaries. And it bothers me. Then we come back to Loretta and Charlie, kind of recapping again. This, it's A lot of stuff gets repeated in this show, as we have seen over the 16 weeks that we're here. I think it's 16. But we're recapping the situation, and... Loretta still thinks that basically she can wake up from 
the one thing that she did, or I mean, she kind of repeated a few statements over a couple of days in public, but she thinks that she can just wake up and that it'll be better. And as I was saying before the show began, that's not really how it works at all. She has to do more than that. I don't know what would have been expected of her in the mid-70s. It does get to talk about Timmy being president. And in my mind, I'm like, well, just a couple of years ago, there was Watergate. I mean, maybe four years ago at this point, 72, 73. And so the question of what it means to be president was maybe at question in 1976. I think at that point, Jimmy Carter would have just been inaugurated. Like the show started in January of 76. And I think that he went into office at that point. Well, you know, he had a term that would still continue and is somewhat seen as controversial. Well, he didn't, he only had one term, sadly the country was in a pretty big mess at that point. I I can't talk too much about that. Let's go forward again to seeing Dennis and Mary in bed and not in bed, but in lying together on the couch. And again, her boundaries are clear. She's there exactly for saving her sister. And I don't like that she's even there or that she has to make this choice. I think that that's, as I've said, coercion. She's been coerced into this situation. And maybe the one honorable part of Dennis's seeing that she is there specifically because of coercion, like he, he didn't say that word, but she he says, I don't want you to be here because you're forced. At least he sees that. That but then it, it turns into him moving the goalpost. And it isn't better. It's almost worse. Or it is worse because this goes on. And maybe, maybe as a TV viewing audience, we want to see things get worse. And that is often the case. We want to see things get worse so that they can get better. That's storytelling. But... It's really, it was really hard for me to watch that in terms of looking at that from a modern point of view. I'm not really sure how someone in the 1970s took that. You know, maybe, maybe it was something that was much more forgiven when I was a child. Maybe it shouldn't have been. So that was the. April 23rd, 1976 episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Thank you for spending some time with me, and we will see you next week in Fernwood.